notice say Nigerian demand for Nigerian government now don't reduce. <laughs> <laughs> Within Nigerians now the demand for Nigerian government it don't reduce. Before na least <laughs> everybody they shout food no day everything cost lights no day road no day this one no day. <laughs> That is when the government just said that. <laughs> fuel high. <laughs> At the time, the demand reduced to give us fuel now. This fuel is too high. Reduce the price of fuel. Reduce the price in the market. It's in not reduced now. <laughs> I'm going to say that they saw what that was. So. Now you could use your hand and talk, say what I'm demanding. Be like, say you need to watch. <laughs> You know, say you get as you go take your wife for house. You can't demand for your husband. You can't be you like say wait till they demand from your husband too much when you know they meet up. You can't they reduce, they reduce. <laughs> now Nigerians don't reduce. Before they ask, but give us fuel. Fuel is too high. Now everybody don't reduce hand. Just give us security. We can do all these things by ourselves. Give us security. <laughs> Something will be possible. See, they ask for too much. <laughs> Give us security. <laughs> because the only way security take me that I don't they 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 want that. This security thing I can't reason. It's just enough to go do a day. <laughs> this people will make you the reason like mad person. <laughs> just make it make I no go do a day. At least if they shoot, you know go enter. If they choke, you know go enter. <laughs> I consider them all, until I follow my neighbor go hospital where they, they won't give them injection. My neighbor will do a day. Injection no greater. <laughs> they took injection event. <laughs> Sickness day, they won't kill her. <laughs> now I talk say no. Attention. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> it will make you the reason like say you don't know what till they talk. And they see the annual in, in conference where Nigerian Bar Associations they do, where they invite Mozo Konje in Uwala. If you see as you take, they speak, they speak to lawyers, they speak to all those positions where they come. They speak to them, all of them, they, they quiet, they clap. If you see them in that mood, they go, they send them the list. <laughs> Nigerian politicians are master in paying attention but not paying attention. <laughs> They go to look at you, eyeball to eyeball. You go to speak to them. Once you speak, they go clap for your mind. Okay, these people know what they do. <laughs> they, they understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> Until you finish, come out. As you come out, they are the thing when you talk, they follow you. <laughs> they go go to another one, rig election. <laughs> policy sustainability. They know service sustain policy. Now, what thing goes on? You want to talk. But these people go to listen. You go to say, <laughs> okay, <laughs> now <laughs> we are getting there. We are not getting anywhere. <laughs> if another government come, you go turn back. <laughs> go be like saying they ask for too much. Now everybody they ask for just one thing: security. <laughs> Make everybody rest. <laughs> We have had episodes of reform and faster economic growth that were not merely a function of the price of oil, but we were unable to consolidate and build on them. And millions, indeed scores of millions of our compatriots, have paid the price in terms of diminished job prospects and human well-being. For example, in the decade between 2000 and 2014, we had an average GDP growth rate of 3.84%, well above our population growth rate of 2.6% per annum, meaning that people were on average truly improving their standards of living. During the following decade, average annual GDP per capita growth has been negative, around minus 0.9%, meaning people were worse off because we were not able to sustain prior positive growth momentum. A very important part of the explanation 
for why we've not been able to succeed is lack of policy consistency. Successive administrations failing to continue good, and I emphasize good economic and social policies put in place by predecessors. Allowing politics to frame policy, what we can call the not made in my administration syndrome. We all understand that where policies are bad and not working, of course, politics should intervene. But where things are working to the good, we ask, why fix what is not broken? To minimize the volatility of economic, of economic and social policy, and to set our country on a steady growth and development path, rather than an episodic growth path, I have become increasingly convinced that Nigeria needs a social contract. By this, I mean a fundamental cross-party, cross-society agreement that certain things in the economy, in the country, in policy and in society are sacrosanct and shall not be touched or changed when administrations change. And the private sector and Nigeria civil society, including influential actors like the NBA, have important roles to play in policing a social contract and holding the political class accountable. The idea of a social contract dates back at least a few centuries when philosophers such as Rousseau, Locke, and Hobbes spelled out the notion of a compact, formal or implicit, defining the rights and duties of rulers and the ruled. A more focused definition for our purposes comes from the former head of the London School of Economics and the former president of Columbia University, my world, former World Bank colleague, Minou Shafiq. She describes the social contract as being about how we pool our resources to provide the public goods we agree are needed and how we support those affected by adverse shocks. Her book, What We Owe Each Other, A New Social Contract for a Better Society, argues that in our fast-changing globalized economy, we need a new social contract to create a sense of security among people. What I'm calling for here is even more basic. I'm saying that all major actors in the governance of our country should agree on some basic parameters for security, macroeconomic and social stability, and the enabling environment for future dynamism and growth of our country. Once agreed, these parameters and policies should be institutionalized or enshrined in law or even be made part of our constitution, not to be tampered with, except perhaps through a national referendum involving the entire country and society. My convictions on Nigeria's need for a social contract were reinforced recently when I was on, in Peru on an official visit. Looking at the country as a Nigerian, I was struck by the mismatch between its politics and its economic performance. Politics in Peru has been and is extremely messy and toxic. The country has had six presidents in the past seven years. The current president took office amid violent protests after her predecessor was arrested and jailed for attempting to dissolve Congress and rule by decree. The government and opposition are constantly at each other's throats with regular impeachment proceedings and frequent social unrest. You would think that a country with such messy politics would be an economic laggard at best, or economic disaster at worst. But to my shock when I looked at the numbers, it was not. I mentioned earlier how Peru's per capita GDP is now almost five times higher than ours, even though we were roughly even in the 1980s. According to IMF numbers, Peru's modest GDP growth rates of 2.5 to 2.7% over the last couple of years is coupled with very good macroeconomic indicators. Its current account deficit is a modest 1.1% of GDP. Its fiscal deficit is 2.5% of GDP, below the recommended 3%. 
and its debt to GDP ratio is 33 percent. According to data from the central bank, Peru's foreign exchange reserves as of this month are at 77.4 billion, most of them usable reserves, and an inflation is 2 percent.